Proclaim it all in the third tone. The Lord is my light and my Savior. Whom shall I fear?
descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Before thee tremble all the powers endowed with intelligence, the sun hymneth thee, the moon glorifieth thee, the stars meet together before thy presence, 
The light obeys thee, the deeps tremble before thee, the water springs are subject unto thee. Thou hast spread out the heaven as a curtain, thou hast established the earth upon the waters, thou hast compassed the sea about with sand, thou hast shed abroad the air for breathing. The angelic hosts serve thee, the choirs of archangels worship thee. The many I cheer them in the six winged seraphim, as they stand round about and fly, veil their faces in fear before thine unapproachable glory. For thou who art God uncircumscribed and without beginning and ineffable, didst come down upon earth, taking the semblance of a servant, being made in the likeness of man. For thou dost not endure, O Master, because of thy tender mercy to behold the race of man beneath the tyranny of the devil, but thou didst come and didst save us. We confess thy grace, we proclaim thy mercy, we conceal not thy benevolence. Thou hast delivered the nature of our race, by thy birth thou didst sanctify a virgin's womb. All creation magnifieth thee who has revealed thyself, for thou, our God, hast appeared on earth and dwelt among men. Thou didst hallow the streams of the Jordan, sending down from heaven thy Holy Spirit, and didst crush the heads of the serpents that lurk there. Wherefore, O King, who lovest mankind, come thou now, through the descent of thy Holy Spirit, and sanctify this water. Tu in sus tari vittore de uamenem parate, vino sciacum, cu pogerere astrum, tu lenta du, ci sfinsește apa aceasta. Wherefore, O King, who lovest mankind, come thou now, through the descent of thy Holy Spirit, and sanctify this water. Give it the grace of redemption, the blessing of Jordan. Make it a fountain of incorruption, a gift of sanctification, a remission of sins, a protection against disease, a destruction of demons, unassailable by hostile powers, filled with angelic might. And may it be to all who draw of it and partake of it unto the cleansing of their souls and bodies, unto the healing of their passions, unto the sanctification of their homes, and unto every expedient purpose, for thou art our God, who through water and spirit has renewed our nature, grown old through sin. Thou art our God, who with water didst drown in sin in the days of Noah. Thou art our God, who by the sea through Moses did set free from slavery to Pharaoh the Hebrew race. Thou art our God, who didst cleave the rock in the wilderness so that water gushed forth and streams overflowed and did satisfy thy thirsty people. Thou art our God, who by water and fire to Elias the prophet, to bring Israel back from the errors of Baal. To thou thyself, O Master, sanctify even now this water by thy Holy Spirit. To thou thyself, O Master, sanctify even now this water by thy Holy Spirit. To thou, O Master, sanctify even now this water by thy Holy Spirit. Grant to all who touch it, anoint themselves with it, and partake of it. Sanctification, blessing, cleansing, and health. And save, O Lord, our faithful rulers, and keep them in peace under thy shelter. Subdue under their feet every enemy and adversary. Grant all the petitions which are for salvation and eternal life. Remember, O Lord, our Metropolitan Tikhon, our Bishop Michael, all of the priests of the diaconate in Christ, and every priestly rank, and all thy people here present, together with our brethren who are absent for just cause, and have mercy on them and on us, according to thy great mercy, that by the elements, by the angels, and by men, by things visible and invisible, thy all holy name may be glorified, together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. signify our servitude and make us worthy to be filled with thy sanctification through partaking of this water and being sprinkled therewith and may it be unto us O Lord for health of soul and body for thou art the sanctification of our souls and bodies and unto thee do we send up glory thanksgiving and worship together with thine unoriginate father and thine all holy and good and life creating spirit now and ever and on to the ages of ages when thou
Oh, it's okay. <laughs> celebrated just a few days ago on the feast of the nativity of Christmas. This feast is Christ's entry into the created realm. It's not chronologically placed. Christ is already 30 years old at the time of his baptism. But it is a continuation of the process of reconciliation, of recreation that began at his, at, at his at incarnation. We celebrate this every year, and most of the time, brothers and sisters, it's a handful of people. Three or four people in the choir, ten people in the church. So, by God's providence, this year it happens to fall on a Sunday. And those of you who are marked with the sign of the cross, who are baptized in the waters that we bless of your baptism, can also participate, because getting you to do it any other time seems to be impossible. So thank God that you're here today. Let it be a day that you renew your commitment, renew your baptism. You know, Moses brought Israel through the wilderness and they were baptized, as Father Patrick read today in the epistle, during the baptism service. They were baptized of, of a cloud and a fire. That was the first type of baptism, a deliverance from death, a deliverance from enslavement, a deliverance from imprisonment forced servitude that they had under the, the yoke of the Egyptians. That was a, a form of baptism. John's baptism, which Christ participates in, we understand this today, a baptism of repentance of sins. It's like unto what our modern day Jews do as far as the uh, ritual cleansing. It was a ritual cleansing in which they confessed their sins and received forgiveness from God, were cleansed of their sins. Christ, who was sinless, but who took all of the <coughs> sins of mankind upon himself, out of his great love and generosity participated in this act so that we too should benefit and that all should benefit from this recreative act. So that's the second baptism. The third baptism is our own. 
Every one of us was baptized. Every one of us entered into the waters of baptism. And water is what? It's a primal element. It's the primal element of life. Without water, there is no life. We always hear about them looking for planets and other galaxies. And what do they look for? Water. Without water, there is no life. Christ enters into the water, himself being the God-man, reconfigures, recreates it. Not only water, but water also represents the entire cosmos, the life of the entire cosmos. That is transfigured by Christ. This is a feast of the Trinity. It's the first feast of the Trinity, if you will, uh, in which the Trinity is revealed to us in the person of Christ and his baptism. Because what happened, the gospel which is so short, you have to have heard that the heavens were open. Christ opens to us the heavens at his baptism because it's our home. It's our heavenly home. It's where we really belong. It's what we were really created for. Heavens open. The, the Holy Spirit descends on him. So we see the Father's voice coming from these open heavens, crying, this is my Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. And the Holy Spirit descends on Christ. So we're welcomed as the human race back to our heavenly home. We have a revelation of the Trinity and the voice of the Father, the Holy Spirit in the presence of the Son. The Baptist was baffled. He had no idea what was happening. How can you come to me? How can you come and be baptized? How is it possible that the pre-eternal God should stand here with me? It's impossible. I can't do this. I won't do this, he said. But Christ said, let it be now so that we can fulfill all righteousness, so that we can set a on the path the entire human race. Let it be. And it says in the Gospel, and he baptized him. This feast of the Trinity is a revelation. The other, by the way, is Pentecost. And there. And the transfiguration of our Lord, when there is a revelation, a feast of the Trinity. And we celebrate this here in the midst of this winter Pascha. Don't lose the, the, the taste. It's delicious, brothers and sisters. Don't lose the taste of the celebration of these feasts. We get back to things so quickly. We run away from spiritual things so quickly. Already in our mind, we're gone when we're in the church. Already in our mind, we're shutting it down. We can't even have time for that. That's nonsense. We have things to do. We have lives to lead. We have money to make and educations to get. These are what really are important, are they? Because they're